Hey YouTube, it's E-Man here. And my dog is an idiot. Okay. So as you can see, we have a Ryan's transfer switch here. I've been willing, meaning to get one of these for a while now, and uh, just now got it. So um, I'm going to walk you guys through an installation. Okay. So things you're going to need are wire connectors, which it does come with, uh, wire staples, screw gun, wire strippers, screwdrivers, knife, or any other cutting utensil, and your breaker panels front, so you can see what breakers are what. And I have my panel right there. And um, just a real quick, like, typical installation. This would be the wire coming from the transfer switch. That's going to your appliance. This is already in. What you would do is you take this black wire out, wire nut it with this black wire. For say that was the red wire, the red wire would go inside of here. So I'm going to mount the switch, and then we will uh, continue recording. Actually, you know what? Hold on, wait. Um, let me just show you the contents of the box. Um, it does not come with this. This is 10-3, 15-foot wire. I'm going to have it run right through up there into the switch. Um, manuals. And one just fell. Um, this is the 10-foot power cord, which is going to plug into your remote inlet box. And I'm just going to set this stuff on the floor for now. Um, this is the remote inlet box right here. It's got uh, 240 input. Set that down here. The transfer switch itself, six circuit reliance transfer switch with um, six or yeah, six circuits, but one double pull. So really, you only have five circuits to choose from. I've already labeled mine. Um, it's going to be the furnace, sump pump, well, well, hot water heater, and refrigerator. So they say to try to balance your load, and I balanced it with circuits instead of wattage. So I was going to do the furnace, which is a 20, 20 amp circuit. This refrigerator, which would be the 20 amp circuit. Some pump, 15. Uh, water heater, 15. And then the well, which is the double pull, 40 amp breaker. And I'll run that through the panel real quick. If you guys can see, furnace, 20. Right below that is the sump pump, which is a 15. This is the water heater, which is a 15. Um, the refrigerator, right here, which is a 20. And the well, which is right here, which is a double pull 20. So, yeah, guys, I'm going to mount the switch. Just mount it for now, like right here. And then uh, I'll continue recording. All right, so we're back. Um, we got the unit mounted pretty securely. Uh, used wood screws to mount it. Um, it is, in fact... This is also going to be another tool you're going to need if you want to do this right. It is level. Um, got it running through this. And all the wires coming out. Unfortunately, I can't do any of the wiring quite yet because um, my family is up and doing stuff around the house. So I'm not going to interrupt their day until later. So right now, um, what I'm going to do is if you can see that yellow... That, or no, it's orange. You can barely see it. That orange cord right there, that runs through from the outside. And uh, we're going to go mount the remote inlet box right after I wire into here. I'm going to do this first just to get it out of the way. So, um, yeah, I'm going to wire the cord in, and then we'll continue. Okay, just a quick update. Uh, we have the wire wired in to all the outlets, or all the, I don't know what you want to call it, inlets to the switch. This will be going to the remote inlet box and uh, it these little regulators here do pass through each wire and the regulators are for the gauges to let you know how much amps you are drawing and uh, yeah that's just a quick update and I did use the proper fitting to bring it in and uh, yeah everything is going very smooth for the time being and I can't wait to start doing this in the panel and I know 14 year old I'm crazy because I want to start wiring but I love it Hey guys, alright, uh, so we're outside now, and I do apologize for the wind, it's a very windy day here in uh, New York, so um, that's the heater outlet coming out, but that's the air conditioner outlet right here, and I was thinking of mounting the, trans the transfer switch inlet box right in level with the bottom of that, so I'll mount that, and then I'll get the wires coming outside, and then we'll, uh, we'll continue recording. Alright guys, we're out here, and successfully we have hooked up the inlet box. Um, 
that's the spare wire, the spare 10-3. I'm going to put that out for you guys right now if you ever install this and you're watching this. 10-3 is the wire you want to use because I got an, an argument with the guy at Home Depot that was trying to tell me otherwise that you're supposed to use 10-4. And uh, we actually pulled the DVD out of the, uh, the container and the, watched the uh, instructional video and he says 10-3 in the video. So, yeah, it's uh, very sturdily mounted, not going anywhere. It is fully grounded, and it looks good. So, um, yeah, we're, now we're going to start wiring the panel. <sighs> All right, guys, so now we're on to the main part here where we got to start doing this into the panel. i got to click off the main. But as you can see up there, where is, um, you can actually see off the reflection off this PVC right here. The, uh, you know, we'll just bring the ladder over, but you can see the reflection of light from outside, and this wasn't even the thing I just did. Mine's pretty, pretty tight, um, but if you look right there, you can actually see daylight outside, so that's obviously going to let some rodents in or something, and I'm just not going to have that, so we got great stuff here, and, uh, we'll go ahead and seal that up, and then we'll start wiring. All right, so we got some great stuff up there. Now for the main event. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Dun -dun -dun. Damn, it's hard. No power. Now we got a light. All right, so here I go into my journey of wiring this panel. And mind you, I am 14 years old. Obviously not a licensed electrician, so that should go to show you do-it-yourselfers that this is very doable for yourselves. And uh, the instructions are to turn off the panels that you would like, or turn off the breakers you would like to power, and then unscrew it and tap in all the wires. So, uh, yeah, here we go. I'll keep you guys updated after almost every circuit. <sighs> Alright, after a nerve-wrecking about an hour, we are done. All the circuits are tied in we're gonna click them all back on now and uh, all these are in the off position but now we're gonna flip on the main breaker and see what we get all right power is back to the house we're gonna start with the sump pump which is this one which did just click on now the furnace which also just clicked on now the well guess we didn't need the well because no one used water all right this what was E E was the fridge and F was water heater so let's just see if that works just by coming over here cranking on some hot water and there we go she fired right up all right guys so I did a great job here um, I'm actually very proud of myself um, I know that sounds kind of cocky, but uh, everything looks very nice and neat. Keep the light on, I'll show you guys. So yeah, uh, everything's all zip tied up and very neat and everything. But now, course of action has to be taken in place here. Whoa, power outage. Okay, let's go test the generator side of this and uh, hopefully everything still works and uh, no explosions occur now the circuits I applied to my transfer switch are the refrigerator the heater the sump pump the well and the water heater so um yeah I'm gonna stop recording real quick so I can go set up the generator and everything and then we'll be back all right everybody we're outside we got the generator here I don't understand why it's why the camera makes everything look so dark it's really not dark out yet but we're gonna give this a, whir a whirl and see if I did everything right okay so first things first plug this into generator where is that little notch right there so let's 
just gotta go like that. I think. Alright. Okay, so we're into the generator now. Alright, now let's put the other end of the cord into the box. Um, these 240 lines are pretty damn tricky because you gotta line the one notch to pin up and everything. Come on. Alright, okay, so we are hooked into the house, right into the generator, so if you give me a second here, leave the light on, generator on, choke on, Let it, leave it a second to choke, alright, now let's flick it on. All right, so that's right outside the basement wall. So every load should be able to hear. Hopefully this works, because just like one of these times that we're in right now, where it's pretty windy out, we're gonna need it. So. All right. Okay, so you can hear the generator inside the house. Now we're going to head to the basement. Pray to God we made all the right connections. Alright, so I'm going to try to stay mainly quiet. So we'll hear if the generator bogs down. First things first, furnace. Put everything in the off position. Okay, everything's in the off. Furnace just started up. Some pump just kicked on. That's the water heater. All right, so the generator did kick down a little bit for the uh, for the furnace, but for the main part, furnace is going. You can hear it and see it. Some pump is operating. Just give that a second to kick on. second there we go some pumps on all right um, did I click on the water heater breaker yep every everything's on except for the well let's try the well that was the thing that kind of drove me crazy when I was buying this cuz uh didn't know if the generator would have enough power to turn on the well but wells on but it's not actually on on like the uh, you know the house doesn't need the water all right water heater started up fine See that green light inside there? And if I'm not mistaken, I believe I just heard the well kick on, but I think I'm mistaken. So, kick on the water heater. And, um, just wait for the well to kick on so we can get power going here. And, uh, I'm just glad that everything with the transfer switch has gone very well so far. So I'm, I'm heading upstairs now to turn on or just check and see how the fridge is doing, which is the only other appliance on the transfer switch. And there we are. But uh, last thing is last. Just got to make sure it can handle that well, and uh, no really way to do that at the moment. But um, so now, as far as I understand, to take the load off the generator, you're supposed to turn everything off at the switch first, starting with the biggest appliance, which in our case would be 
the well, then the fridge, then the furnace, then the sump pump, and the water heater. And now we can go unhook the generator and get everything back on line power. Alright, so this was a semi-nerve-wrecking experience for me. Uh, doing the installation all by myself. Uh, no help at all. 14 years of age. And uh, I can say I'm quite thrilled with myself and uh, how this has turned out. So I highly recommend one of these units. Um, let's kick on the sump pump because I know that's going to need to go on. You can see these little watt meters. We're drawing about a thou right over a thousand watts with just the sump pump itself. Now that's off. Okay, so we're gonna click it back to off. Okay, so um, one last thing: if main power is restored, then you can just right back down the line, and then we are now back on grid power and off the generator. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.